You see those rabbits? Those guys are brave. Almost started calling one of them gutsy. So it come right up against the edge of our cement here. No concern given at all for our dog, who eats all beasts of air and field. Like they have no concern whatsoever. I'll tell you right now, our Jack Russell Terrier is not to be trifled with. We're still in Daniel this week, and we're talking about some pretty interesting beasts in chapter 7. We read through this. Oh man, what a crazy dream he had. But then it all made sense. We spent some time praying about it, thinking about it. So Daniel 7, technically, we're going back in time from where we were last week, the first year of Belshazzar. But the story is about the future. So I guess it makes sense that it's put in the Bible towards the end of Daniel. So I hope you're keeping up. It says that Daniel, he fell asleep one night and he had these dreams. Then he got up and he wrote them down. So he says that the heavens, the four winds were stirring up over the great sea and a beast starts raising up out of it. And it's like a lion. But it has wings. And then the wings were removed from it. And then it was made to stand up straight like a man. And it was given the heart of a man. Then another beast comes up. And it's a bear. And it's raised up on one side. And it has three ribs in its mouth. And they told it to devour things. Third beast is like a leopard. This leopard had four wings like of a bird. It also had four heads. And it was given dominion over things. Then comes the rowdiest beast of all. This thing comes up. It's got teeth like of iron. And ten horns on its head. This thing's super rowdy. It's, uh, it's making a mess and destroying everything under its feet. And then he looked closely. And a small horn comes up and sort of displaces three of the other horns. And on this small horn, there's eyes like a human and a mouth. And the mouth starts talking trash about God specifically. So we know these aren't friendly beasts. And Daniel's scared. And then, Daniel, he sees this fiery, fiery throne set up, and God shows up. And he sits in this throne, and there's fire everywhere, and there's 10,000 times 10,000 people who basically are worshiping him. And he's holding court. And the first thing he does to Iron Teeth is zap him with like a string of fire and just obliterates him. And that's done. But the other three, he removes their dominion, but he lets them live a little while. Like for a season, is what the Bible tells us. Which is interesting. Like they were within control. And Daniel sees all this happen, and he's still, I mean, he's still afraid, and he's confused. And so he asks someone in his dream, what that was all about. This guy explains to Daniel, he's like, look, that first beast, that represents Babylon. 
And that would have likely been under Nebuchadnezzar and then under Belshazzar, of course. So, they weren't terrible. I mean, he had to prove his point to them, to, to Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. But they came around. And he gave them the heart of a man. So it just shows that they were much more human. The next one that popped up, that was the Medes and the Persians Empire. Now, they acquired that empire by killing. And maybe that has something to do with the way the bear had the ribs in its mouth. But it was still okay. Mostly. The leopard showed up. And that represents the Greeks. They're still only, only the Greek, the Greeks had only their dominion taken from them and were still allowed to live. But the Romans didn't work out so well for them. Because what we, what we're told is that fourth beast, that's Rome. And they set up ten kings. And the last one that comes along displaces three of those kings. And speaks pompous words. Pompous against the Lord. And preaching against the Lord is what I understand as the unforgivable sin. So he doesn't just get his dominion removed from him and allowed to live a little while. He's terminated right there on the spot, which sounded pretty cool. And then we read later in verse 13. Daniel says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, which is God, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. So we see that Daniel's dream tells us that Jesus' dominion will last forever. That there will be no more after him. No one will destroy it. And that's that. And I think about Daniel's dream and, and those beasts and what they represent. They were things mostly in history. We have beasts today. They're our own struggles. We may not see them like an animal with another, another animal's parts like wings, or metal teeth, tin horns, etc. Talking horns. But they're out there. I think the challenge for Christians is that we need to identify what are those beasts in our life? And then, like God did, we have to decide if these are things that can be somewhat just turned around, maybe used in our favor. Or the beasts in our lives things that may have to be terminated completely. And I think, especially if you pray about it, you'll know the difference. I don't know if you can hear that dog, by the way. Okay, we're no longer a threat. So that's the question is, is how do we identify what our beasts are? I would say, what are the things that are preventing you from being the person that you know you should be? We're holding on to things. And that's normal. To me, the analogy is the beasts are very strong and they were given dominion. And the challenges that we face 
are given strongholds in our lives that we have to tame or eliminate. So think about what the worst beast in your life is. And if you could give it an image, what would it look like? Because a lion's pretty cool. And then it stands up on its back legs like a man. It's given a good heart. Like Maybe that's just a mild issue that you have in your life. And I hope you guys don't have trouble identifying them. And if you can't identify what the beasts are in your life, you're either doing really good or really bad. You decide, I guess. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for the time that we spend in your word. Um, I've enjoyed these weeks that we've, we've spent doing videos. I know that's coming to an end as we're gonna resume classes in a couple of weeks and I'm excited for that but just ask that you pray for those who are challenged with getting back out and coming into the church and being around people I know that our church leadership has spent a lot of time concerning themselves with what that's going to look like and what's the right thing to do in the schedule that we followed and I thank you for that and that leadership we ask all these things in Jesus name amen so thanks for watching this morning I was hoping we'd get to see a few more wild beasts besides those rabbits. But I guess not. But I'm Brent Fulton. And until next time, enjoy our wild America. Look here. Here's some more. It's awesome. So yeah, we enjoyed our wild America today. <laughs>